This show is brought to you by NoGravCBD.com. If you've got joint pain or other medical issues, check out NoGravCBD.com. That's N-O-G-R-A-V-C-B-D.com. Use promo code ROCKMAN for your special rates. The Jacksonville Free Press, bringing quality urban news for more than 30 years. Pie 5 Pizza, food that's fun, fresh, and fast. Pie 5. And of course, Edward Waters College, preserving history, promising futures. And now, from the campus of Edward Waters College, it's the Rahman Experience. It's a brand new experience, a brand new time, a brand new way to do it. Hey, yeah, it's all mine. I'm the one telling stories you thought couldn't be told. I'm the one that bring you in your way, you shaking from the cold. I'm the one always out front, yeah, trying something new. I'm the one that's gonna deliver when they ask what it do. Politics, entertainment, a science, all the news. Keeping you on the level with the stuff you can use DJ Kids on the beat, the rock got the track It's the rock, man, that's serious, you know that's where it's at Hey there, it's Rockman Johnson, welcome to the experience And if you know me, and anyway, you know I'm just a bit under the weather You can hear it in my voice, it's a little hoarse But I've uh, been in production with several shows uh, hosting shows, speaking, doing all that stuff. So I'm really excited to be uh, given platforms to do all these things. But I do have to take some time for me, and uh, you know that's really important. And you got to do the same for you. So learn from that. Um, hopefully, my voice will be back sometime soon. But right now, um, just got to take it easy. But the show must go on, and thanks to you, the show is continuing to go on. Like I have told you before, we are on. Um, iTunes, which usually takes a while to get on. We are on uh, Spotify, we're on Spreaker, all these great platforms, and as of last week, we're on iHeartRadio. So you can find me on all of those apps or wherever you get your podcasts, and I'm glad that you're supporting the show. Now, as always, you can leave your feedback and comments at J on Twitter, at uh, J on Instagram, or Facebook.com. Slash Rahman J fans. I want to know what you're thinking. Plus, you can stay up to date with news all the time. We talk about stuff that's happening in the community, and I'd love to get your feedback on anything we post. So come on, be a part of it. It's an amazing experience. Now, this week, there are a couple things in the news that I really want to talk about. There was a, a an inmate in jail in Texas who literally voted. She just wanted to vote. She was an inmate. There are some voting laws, like after you've served your time, whether you can be a part of things or not. Well, this inmate was uh, sentenced to five more years. She was sentenced to additional time because she voted in jail, and that's not something she's supposed to do, even though, how did she get the ballot? It was sent to her by the government. Anyway, that's something we'll be talking about on social media. Plus, remember that affluenza teen, that kid down in Texas whose defense was His parents were just too rich. He had affluenza. That's right. That's what the attorney said, that he was just too affluent for his own good. Well, just a few days, really a week before his 21st birthday, he is out of jail and back on the streets. And remember, he killed four people while drinking and driving, and he wasn't even old enough to drink. Mind you, there is a group of kids in Michigan, four of them, and they're charged with murder and the death of one because they were throwing rocks off an overpass. Is it right? Is it wrong? Those are the questions that we tackle on social media. So come on, join us as we continue the conversation in the Rockman experience. Uh, So so thankful to a new sponsor this week, No Grab CBD. They are on board. Still PMP Nutrition, the Jacksonville Free Press, EWC. Everyone has come on to make this thing, my dream, a reality. So thank you for all you're doing toward that. And let's consistently, as I said before, keep the conversation going. All right. On the show this week, A-Train, the comedian, he'll be doing a show, and we've got a special surprise, so you got to stay tuned to the end of the show to get that surprise. But first, the news. In a stunning move, FBI Special Counsel Robert Mueller had the FBI serve warrants to subpoena documents from the offices, home, and even a hotel room for President Donald Trump's private counsel. And I have this witch hunt constantly going on for over 12 months now. And actually, much more than that, you could say it was right after I won the nomination it started. And it's a disgrace. It's frankly a real disgrace. Now, the move comes after the president says there was no collusion with Russia in the investigation that started shortly before he took office. 
Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg has a brand new status on his Facebook page. It says testifying to Congress. Now, in two days of hearings, the tech hotshot will testify about the Russian use of his platform to influence elections in the United States and how Cambridge Analytica used data from users to target them without their permission. Saturday Night Live is just off the heels of another winning show. The star of the biggest grossing movie in the world right now, Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman was there along with musical guest Cardi B. Let's go to white people for 400. Your friend Karen brings her potato salad to your cookout. Uh Uh-oh, T'Challa. I think I'm getting the hang of this. I sense that this white woman does not season her food. That's right. And, and if she does, it is only with a tiny bit of salt. That's exactly right. Yeah. And no paprika. No paprika, no. And she will probably add something unnecessary like raisins. I know, right? So, something tells me that I should say... Say it! Oh, hell no, nah, Karen. <laughs> Keep your brand ass potato salad to yourself. Yeah! Yeah! The show boasted the best ratings this year. Cardi B revealed her pregnancy during the show and... Alec Baldwin saw a return as President Donald Trump. Stay right there. The experience returns in just moments. Mondays are just like one of those days. Back to work already? Now, Pie 5 Pizza Company gives you Magic Monday. Just stop in and mention Magic Monday. And for a limited time only, for just $5.55. That's right, $5.55. Get your custom handcrafted pie just the way you like it. The toppings you want. More than 40. Your favorite crust. We've got four, including gluten-free. And your pick of savory sauce. It's all for just $5.55. At participating locations only. Fun, fresh, fast, and sprinkle with a little bit of magic. It's Pie 5. It's the Rahman Experience. All right, you've seen this guy everywhere. He is a host, he's a comedian, he's worked with the original King of Comedy, D.L. Hughley. Uh, did I say, I said Hughley, it's Hughley. He's <laughs> toured with Country Wayne. Um, I mean, he's been with Kevin on stage. I can go down the list of all the people this guy's been with all around the country. But one thing that we know is he is straight out of Duval. And uh, he's somebody we love and respect Please welcome to the Rockman Experience, comedian A Train. <laughs> What's so, going on, man? Man, it is awesome to have you in the experience, and we're both going back to our radio roots, right? Because even though you like this podcast is is something new and different for me, but I started my career mm-hmm. on the radio. That's good, man. I started out on the radio, and now I'm back with this podcast on the radio. You again. know, you know, and I want to, I want to, I want to keep it all the way honest. Okay. You started on way before radio. You <laughs> listen. I don't know if y'all know it or not, but Rodman was a man of the city. You hear me? Oh, this man. dude here, man, set the bar for so many things. You know, uh, in Jacksonville, as as a teenager, that was a long time ago, bro. You've been <laughs> doing your thing for a minute, man. What's and I'm team? telling you, man, I've always stood afar off and just like you know what. That dude, there's that dude is the real deal, man. I appreciate you, man. That's real Thank talk, you. man. Thank you. Thank That's you. real. But talk. it's about you. This hour is about you. <laughs> we want to focus on A Train, man. You got you were doing some just completely awesome stuff, and and I'm I'm excited. And and you're back. Tell me about your newest job. You like a Jamaican? You got part Jamaican? I got, I got yeah. tree jobs, man. You know what I mean? That's all tree job. Just you know, I'm, I'm talking about my morning shit. <laughs> That's my morning hours right there. Yeah. So you were back on the air on on the radio. Yeah, man. Well, with uh, I just. Uh, um, came on with uh, Praise 107.9 The Power Up with Pastor Terry and Brittany and uh, we're on every morning from uh, Monday through Friday from 6 to 10 man and the show is doing great brother we're getting a great response from the community and from our market and uh, we're the number one um, morning time uh, drive time show so you know Praise 107.9.com Yes, because most people yes. around the country, around the world, really. So if you are um, around the world, you can log on to praise one hundred seven point nine dot com. They can download the app, man. Download there it is. They can download the app and search praise one hundred seven point nine. And uh, it'll be the purple and gold logo app. So we'll look for it. Yeah, Make man. sure we hit it over and over again. But congratulations on Thank that you. new opportunity. And Thank you. You know, having been in this business for the majority of my life, mm-hmm. it is funny. 
I happened to catch you before I knew you were doing it. I kept, I caught it on uh, Facebook Live, and I was doing other stuff, and I couldn't stop listening. I know Brittany. I know right. Pastor Terry. Right. Brittany's an amazing singer. But you guys together? Yes. Yeah, man. It's, you get the morning crunk. You know, and, and it's all about that uh, that uh, that chemistry. Yeah. You know, and that's what we were uh, really, you know, hoping would be there. And, man, it's there, brother. You guys it's make it there. happen. You know, Brittany is, uh, you know, she's phenomenal, like you say. And then Pastor Terry, we kind of, you know, I, actually, I'm there to keep Pastor Terry being the good guy as the pastor. You know, <laughs> I get a, I get a chance to play the bad guy for his sake, you know, so he don't lose his membership. And, and you know, I had to ask because, <laughs> and you are uh, known for what you do in comedy. Most comedians that we have these days are blue. Mm-hmm. Boom. That means they cusses. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you, and, and we, there's a great history, and we'll talk about that as the show continues, but there's cool. such a great history with the Lawanda Pages, who is yeah. one of my favorite comedians, wow. and Moms Maybelline. Yeah, Because I studied these, as an actor, yeah. I studied them to, to be better at what I do. <sighs> and they're blue, but there's a, a technical thing to them, but you do, you still bring all the technical expertise to it. Thank you. And not, the and the, nothing's right, because you know, yeah. the, I cusses too. Right. <laughs> the Lord know my life, he's still working on me, y'all, he's still, you know, I, I cuss a little bit, I don't, I, in the word, what, what did, uh, not Adele, what's the other one, uh, Cheryl, no, it was Adele, Adele Gibbons, she said, I don't beat kids, I don't do drugs, I'm entitled to a mother every <laughs> now So, I tell you, that's funny, in yeah. saying that, though, you, that's one of the things, this is a gospel yeah. Morning show. Yeah, but man. You, you bring the funk and you don't bring cuss words. Is that hard? No, it's not hard at all, man. I just I'm I just be myself. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing I do on stage, you know what I'm saying? Uh who I am on stage is the same guy I am off stage. And I made that declaration, man, when I started off in comedy. I wanted to be able to do this thing so that whatever I do, I'd be able to sleep in peace at night. Ah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. so that's that's pretty much where it is. And I kind of grew up. I mean, it's not not kind of, but you know, I was raised that way. It's just, I've been this way my whole life, man. You know what I'm saying? And, like, we come through an era where, you know, although we grew up in the hood, there's a certain level of respect that you had to have for your elders and your, you know, even your elderly siblings. So, I mean, you know, and I was always that little brother to everybody. Yeah. You know, so, um, and like I said, it just, it's just me, man. You know what I mean? Speaking so. of just you, who is A-Train? Oh, man. A-Train is... You know, uh, because I know your government name, right? Right, right. right. (laughs) And A Train is that alter ego of that cat, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like the government name, you know what I'm saying? Uh, not government, but that government, government you know what I'm saying? G U B, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that government side is uh, is a real corporate, you know, um, 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 always in a place of uh, you know, a thought provoking posture, you know. But A Train is that side that just it come at them like a locomotive, you know what I mean? It's like my other side, you know, of who I am, of like to have fun, always tripping out, you know, uh, always bring the laughs, always the center of attention, you know, that's my personality, man. So it's to the point where people who really knew me, when I stepped into comedy, they were like, man, what took you so long? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm exactly. saying? So, and then the folks who knew me by my government name over in the business world, they're like, you're doing what? that? Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, take me from the beginning. Um, you're from, born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. Born and raised what right was, here in Duval. What man. was childhood like for you? What was childhood coming up in, coming of age? Yeah. When, I mean, we were at a time, we were in the same age group, so. Yeah, There man. were the Atlanta child murders. There was, you know, the late 70s, early 80s in that time growing up. What was childhood like for you? Childhood was fun. It really was. I mean, we grew up in the hood. We were poor, but we didn't know we were poor because everybody around us was poor. You know, I didn't know if I didn't know food stamps was a bad thing until, you know, I started going to a church where, you know, my friends, you know, they live both of their parents and they didn't have the food stamps. You know what I'm saying? So um, but my childhood was fun, man. I'm the baby of seven. Uh, the brother that's next to me or the sibling that's next to me, we're eight years apart, you know, so there were always, our, our apartment was like the community center. It was all, our door was never locked. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was always over. We always had a good time. And although we were in the middle of the hood, in the middle of drugs, alcohol, and every, you know, foul thing you can think of, but that sense of family and having a good time and being able to laugh at yourself. That's what childhood was like for me. And I bring a lot of that to the stage now, that those bright spots in the midst of the crack epidemic. You know what I'm saying? Like you talk about in the mid-80s and, you know, how things were out here in these streets in Duval. And I bring a lot of that stuff to the stage of those good times. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people jail with it, man. You know? So 
And uh, you once growing up, uh, what high school did you go to? I went to Rains. I grew Rains up in uh, I grew up on Moncrief, right. Washington Heights. Uh huh. First lane, second speed bump. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Watch Night, Kid Night. You know what I mean? Oh so, man, yeah, so, man. Went to Reigns, of course. Big rivalry, Reigns and Rebo. Reigns and Rebo. Yeah. The rivalry continues. Yeah, yeah. The rivalry continues, and it's so crazy because, um, you know, my my whole household, uh, everybody went to Rebo. But then by the time, you know, I came out of, uh, you know, left the junior high at Reball, and it was time for me to go to the senior high. My mom, my mom moved us out of the hood. Oh, gotcha. Over gotcha. the summer. Okay, okay. And that address fell. Over on the rain side. Right over on the rain so, side. You know, all, so all my friends, everybody's all every siblings. Oh, right, God. Because when you said Washington Heights. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Even though I didn't grow up on the north side, you knew I went to Rebalt. Right. 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 So I'm like, but wait a minute, Washington Heights is in the Rebalt. Exactly. You just walk right through the path. And you're right the, there. You walk through the woods, you're right to Rebalt. So but, you were able to that should be interesting yeah, during, We moved out during the summer. Range Rebalt Week should be real interesting with you. It family, is. You but you know, family. you know, Northwest Classic, we all one big family. Of course anyway, you know we gotta you know sell some right. wolf so You know we gotta sell some wolf <laughs> So yeah, man, that um that was a real interesting thing for me. And it took me a minute to uh, to jail and kind of, you know, settle in because, like I say, you know, everybody in my crew, they were all at Reebok. So you know what, what, I mean? what activities were you involved in in school? Because as I think about it. Um, uh, you mean other than suspension? <laughs> uh, <laughs> other was, than ISSP? See, you know I, mean? I remember, and uh, although he's younger than me, mm-hmm. um, I was uh, I went to Reigns and Reebok. Okay. Now, I know you're like, how did you arrange that? Right, right, right. Because they had AP courses at Reigns that weren't at Reebok. Sure they had did. AP courses at Reebok that weren't sure at Reigns. Did. So, sure I did mornings did. at Reigns, afternoons at Reebok. Right? That's how I got all my AP courses wow. met. So, I kind of am hybrid. And my mom graduated from Reigns. So, wow. we, we kind of got that hybrid thing. And I, it yeah. reminds me of that, that rap, remember, 95 South? Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 went to Reigns with my mama Woody. Right. <laughs> I was a product of that. That's how we used to chill in the field, man. Oh, come on. Yeah. But I remember Roland. Okay. Okay. I remember when Roland was like two foot one. Yeah, man. And still I, is. I hope yeah. you don't barbecue me. Right. Cause I love, and we're talking about, uh, we're talking about comedian Lil Duval. Lil Duval. Yeah. But I remember as his, yeah. you know, from back then. What's so and, crazy is, not to cut you off, but yeah. we used to ride the same bus. Are you serious? We used to ride the same bus. And like I told you. But he's younger than us. Right. But this neighborhood that my mom moved us to. Okay. So my bus used to stop right in front of that trolley on Lamb Turner. Yes. Car wash. Yes, yes. So right that Lake Forest area. Okay. Right off the behind that Amico. Okay. Right there. And Lil Duval always got the same bus stop. And they had to walk to the other side of the expressway in Norwood. Yeah. Yep. So uh, his grandma's house was over there. So yeah, we used to ride the bus every day, man. I think. They create. They didn't realize that they were creating this powerhouse guy. Wow! They used to rank on Roland so bad. But it's the Duval and way. Though. One day he came back. Listen, and little Duval was born. And I mean, Listen. he was. I remember him <laughs> just going in, and you like, did he just did that little? Did right, he just right, say that? right, right, right. But he was so cool. Hey man, and and to see it. So was it like that for you? Did you? How did you? What did you start? Did they, did was, they come for you like you the food stamp boy? And, and you come I was the, the one. I was the one that initiated all of the ranks, man. Really, I was that kid. For those that don't know, they're listening around the world. Ranking is is or selling out as we're calling it. That's yeah. what they call when, when you would insult somebody in a good way. Yeah, teasing someone, teasing them with fun and laughter. They called it John ranking. and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you were the, the rank king. I was the I was the rank king, and okay. because what happened was as a kid, my big brother, you know. He was like he was the real comedian of the family, wow. and and I used to just try to mimic my big brother all the time, man. And I remember being about like eight years old. Mm-hmm. My brother, keep in mind, he's eight years older than me, and he used to gather up all his friends around apartments. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And he's like, "Hey, man, come in. Hey, come check my little brother out. He's funny." And he'll stand me up on the coffee table and tell me, "You got five minutes. Go." And you would just make and them I would all just and I would just rip. Wow. I would, rip, I would do this multiple times a week. If only and we had camera phones back then. I know, man. I know. I know. And, and that's like, you know, I tell people that story, you know, and my brother, you know, and different people in the neighborhood, they'll attest to it. Like, yeah, we remember that. And and my brother will always encourage me in this in this lane. Yeah. And uh, So family's been really big for you. Clearly growing up with such yeah, a large man. family. And my family is hilarious, brother. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So ranking, you know, that teasing element, you know, uh, uh, 
it was some people start off as a defense mechanism, you know, yeah. because your clothes may not be as best, you know, as, as you would like them. So you got to get them before they get you, you know, talk about them before they talk about you. And that was just a lifestyle for me, man. So, you know, like you say, Lil Duval, I mean, that is Jacksonville's way. They're going to go in on you yeah. and you they're either going to make you or break you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you got to, you got to. Now they call it petty. I know some of my students. I, I, or they it, call it bullying. Yeah, yeah, they call it bullying. Like now you just like, man up. You know? It's so funny. My yeah, students man. Like, Mr. Johnson, you're so petty. Because <laughs> the clap back is real. It's real, man. Just so you know. Because I had to clap. I went to. It's real. I didn't grow up on the north side, but I went to Reebok. Listen, man. And I went to Highlands. So I had to learn. Oh, my God. To Highlands. find the clap back. Highlands, brother. Yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, it was all you had. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You had to have that sharp tongue, you know, because that was your only hope. You know what I'm saying? You had to get them cats off of you. And when you got them off of you, then they were cool with you. Yeah. Instant respect. Cause I, cool and I was weird. I wore African clothes to school. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, I was like you know, revolutionary. <laughs> so I had to learn real quick. If you're going to wear this, you better be really you know, around. I mean, you've always had a mind around the corner. You know what I'm saying? You've always been in another space. I was you looking know? at something. Yeah. like, yeah, right. You know, everybody's yeah. like, forward Wakanda. I'm like, man, I've been forward Wakanda since right. the 80s, man. Right. Come, right. On, come on, come on. But those were, that's that's what the upbringing was like, man. And um, so, I don't regret not one bit of it. So what would you do? You said that your activity in high school was suspension. What did you do like after high school? What was next? Because it took a while before you actually mm-hmm. created, and I don't want to even say created, but allowed A Train yeah. to be public yeah. and really let this be a career for you. Yeah. Uh, what was you, what were you doing before that? And then like you know college or what? What did you do after? Um, of course, you know in in junior college, you know with yeah. FCJ, yeah. and um, I really wanted to be a fireman. Wow, I never knew I that. I still want to be a fireman, man. It's I chase a truck in a minute. And I went to the uh, the fire academy, and that's when I found out that that you know, because I used to suffer with asthma as a kid. Oh, yeah. I was a uh, an extreme asthmatic. Uh, I used to have um, uh, severe uh, asthma as a child. I used to live in a hospital, brother. Okay. So you know, um, going through the academy and some of the exercises, you know, what they call gator, you know, carrying that hose and running through. You know, uh, the stairwell and, you know, crawling in the tunnels, doing those different uh, physical exercises with the smoke and stuff. It kind of got the best of it. So I wasn't able to, you know, to do that. But uh, it's still like a lifelong dream. It's like, man, you know, I love that fire truck, brother. I'm here to tell you. My wife will tell you. She's like, when we started dating, you know, um, we would be going somewhere and I see a truck on a, on a call and I hit a U-turn. She's like, what are you doing? It's like, I'm following this truck. I'm following this engine, you know? And sure enough, it pulls up on the scene, man. You got this, you know, this this W3, uh, you know, this uh, uh, big fire call and, you know, she's like, oh my God, you know, and I'd be out there helping them unload the truck, and, you know. <laughs> Were there any first responders in your family? Um, yes. Okay. Actually, my oldest brother, um, he was a, a paramedic and a fireman. Okay. And um, and now he is a uh, ear, nose, and um, throat doctor. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that medical field, then I have nurses and all that stuff in my family as well. Gotcha. So gotcha. Yeah. So from there, after no to the fire academy, <laughs> um, started um, working uh, at the. Uh, I remember I got a little job. At the Florida Star newspaper, uh, a paper of legacy, yes, you know, yes. uh, in the black community, and uh, and I made that that gesture because I felt like if you wanted to be prominent, you had to associate yourself with some prominent organizations. Wow! And I went to Miss Simpson and I told her those words. And they gave me a job, brother. What'd and, you do? Um, page layout. I was uh, I was responsible for designing the layouts for uh, the pages as well as the uh, like the sales paper. So you- the and different right articles. by the railroad track, right on Myrtle Avenue. When they moved the gateway. When they moved the gateway, Because okay. they had just had the fire. The fire was there at Myrtle Avenue because they yep. lost a lot of the historic right. papers. Right, okay. So I was over there in, uh, at the gateway site and uh, working with uh, Miss Glenda Jones, which yes. we still talk today yeah, yeah. on Facebook, and uh, Ron and uh, TJ Stafford, yeah. Erica. So it was all us, man, and that was our thing, my layout just cranking them out every day wow. you know and it was a, it was you can identify with this when you see your work being published it's a source of it's like man I did that yeah. I designed that yeah. you know what I'm saying look at my name you know what I'm saying yeah. so that kind of like gave me a bug you know for that little entertainment world I guess or you know and um and then from there, I started dating, you know, uh, like a couple years later, you know, I'm like 23, who ran into my wife 
And she told me, she was like, hey, you ever thought about doing stand-up? I think you need to be doing stand-up. And we really wasn't even dating. I think we had been cool for maybe like three months, just talking, just vibing. And she was like, you ever thought about doing stand-up? You need to be doing stand-up. And I was like, man, nah, I ain't doing no stand-up, man. I was like, that's crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, and where I was in my faith, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that you can do that and still, you know, be of God. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, so I brushed that off, and then some other people who had influenced my life, they were like, no, you know what I mean? So I was like, well, yeah, I knew I couldn't do this. And then all of a sudden, man, about like eight years ago, that thing just resurfaced to me, man. And some clarity took place with the how, you know, it's like, hey, you know, different than you going to work. You know what I mean? It's like, it's you, a job. It's a job. Yeah. You do this, and, and then boom, you know what I'm saying? You maintain your integrity. So um, different things like that began to clear up for me. And my wife and some friends forced me into a competition. I would, I didn't want to do it. It's like, yeah, you're going to sign up. You're going to do this competition. And uh, it was a comedy competition and showcase. The prize was you would win seven minutes to open up for this show that was coming okay. at the time of Junior Theater. So um, long story short, it was about 13 other comedians in the contest. And all of them had either graduated from comedy school at the comedy club or they were in comedy school, which I didn't even know that was a school for comedy. You were just like... I was just like fresh off the street. Thinking back on the time when you were a kid standing on the coffee table right. trying to make the guys from the hood like Right. Yeah. So so this is my first time in doing a set yeah. and doing it next to comedians. I'm like, this is crazy. Prior to that, I had some hosting opportunities, but it wasn't no stand-up. You know what I mean? Right. So um, uh, I won. Got a stand ovation. And two weeks later, I'm at the Times Union uh, Theater performing uh, before a sold out crowd, and I get another standing ovation. And I was like, oh, I like this. You know what I mean? And I got hooked, and it never slowed down since then. So, and then two years later, I was uh, on stage with DL Hughley, man. Which, is, which has been phenomenal for which you because that's continued to make man. things grow. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you before we get into talking about some of the other comedians and shows and all that. Mm -hmm. um, you right now we can buy your can we do you have a comedy album out yet coming soon I remember Richard Pryor used to try to sneak at aunt and uncle's house remember those old Richard Pryor yes, albums yes man the more yeah. albums yeah. which I used to and the cassette tapes I used to listen to sneak in the room with my brother and listen to those man. Uh -huh, uh -huh. you know what I mean but so, you got one coming I got one coming we'll look forward to it yeah now you've mentioned several times your wife mm -hmm. who is I think I knew her before I knew you. You did. You did. Because she's friends with my cousin. My cousin right. and she went to high school together. Mm -hmm. And so I've known Tracy for years and years. Mm -hmm. What was me... And Tracy, obviously, we'll, we'll talk about her a bit. She is like a, the, the back... You're real. Yeah. For real. Yeah. For real. Yeah. And, and a dear friend. Huggy Lowdown called her the Oracle. <laughs> She's really? the oracle. Because she did predict all Listen, this. Listen, man, yeah. she is the nucleus of it all. She, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did yeah. you, so you were dating when you you know started at the yeah, Florida Star. Mm -hmm. How did you meet, how, what was meeting Tracy like? We met at a, re, uh, at a friend of mine's album release party. Tracy was his publicist. Who was And it? I was his assistant, Arthur Jones. Yeah, yeah. He had Bishop, the saxophone. Bishop A. T. Jones' son. Right. Who, he had Ardell's the, brother. Exactly. Yeah. He had the saxophone yeah. uh, album out, you yeah. know. And uh, Tracy worked on that project and everything. And at his release party or release concert was the first time, like, both sides of his staff really got together and got a chance to meet. We all had communicated via conference call, whatever, stuff like that. And when I saw her, I didn't know that she was the girl that I had heard about. I just saw her at the in the lobby at uh, Titus Harvest Dome. Okay. And um, that's where the concert was held. And... Uh, and so, you know, I approached her, whatever. It's like, you know, ooh, I know your husband is a happy man. And she was like, are you trying to ask me if I'm married or not? You know? <laughs> That's like, right. <laughs> so, so I said that and just walked off. And then later that night, you know, they were like, hey, we want everybody to meet everybody, you know, that's a part of the production. And then she was in that meeting. I was like, oh, my God, that's the girl, you know. And um, um, and then from there, man, we just started you know, the vibe just, was there. Started vibe. The vibe was there. Yeah. So, what is it? you guys have been married over twenty years now? Yes, man. Um, actually, well, uh, last November made nineteen years. Nineteen years. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and call it twenty. Yeah, I know. We've been <laughs> together. For, we, we dated a year and we got married uh, the following year. So we've been together for twenty years. And but, um, you all are still. Every time I see you in a show, every time I see Tracy and you together, mm -hmm. you guys are really. And I, I don't say this facetiously. And some people say, "Oh, I married my best friend." You mm -hmm. clearly married your best friend. Yeah, man. We y'all laugh together. together y'all yeah. joke together. Yes, man. It's a it's a great it's yeah. a great synergy. What is the secret to 
creating the kind of synergy that you've created with Tracy? Being connected with someone who's not only able to meet you where you are at the moment, but they're able to compliment where you're going. Mm. And Tracy is that thing for me. You know, like I say, you know, when, when we met, I mean, shoot, I was I was 22 when we met. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then 23 when I got married. So, you know, being a kid, you know, and, and, and just keep in mind, it's like, you know, I'm fresh out of my mom's house. There's some things I just don't know about. Like, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I still have a lot of growing to do. Yeah. But she was able to meet me at that place. And you grew together, and where I was because she was growing too. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. You grew together. Yeah, she man. was able to. Yeah, yeah. So, so, what advice to to younger couples, to couples who are experiencing that? I see it all the time as a college mm-hmm. professor, 22, 23 year olds dating, and they think, you know, some of the advice that I know I've gotten from older relatives. Mm-hmm. You know, I had some younger, uh, some older relatives at certain points, like mm-hmm. my younger older relatives mm-hmm. would say. Wait as long as you can to get married. Right. Don't get married soon. Right. Then my grandmother's sister, who was, you know, in her 90s, my grandmother's oldest sister, I remember going to the family reunion at 14, and she said, how many children you got? And I (laughs) said, "Uh, none. Right. She said, well, you been to the dock? (laughs) What are you? You know, what are you? Because she, in her thing, like, if you are not, they're from a little country town, Lottie Stark, you know, something's wrong with you. But you guys have managed to be a young couple and mm-hmm. they're still very much in love. What do we what do you what advice would you give to those other younger people that are finding their path? I would say um it goes it, 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 Tracy and I connected on a very uh intellectual level. I often tell her that when I found her, I found myself. It was almost like a like a bookend mm. of trajectory of where I know I needed to go or what I know I needed to add up to. You know what I mean? Yeah. She was like the ex, you know, in the summation. It's like, okay, whoever I'm going to be and what I'm striving, I know it That's needs to That's the way to, to get through it. Exactly. Yeah. So, so my thing is if, you know, if <laughs> you're dating. Equal, right. Equal Tracy Henderson. Right. Yeah, Tracy Henderson. Yeah, Smith, yeah Tracy Henderson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my thing would be, you know, to anyone that's out there and you're in that, that posture of trying to pursue someone for your future, you know, um, I would say trust trust your heart on where you know you want to go because although I was young I still had a glimpse and understanding of where I wanted to go so I don't want to make the preconceived notion that because these other people may be young they don't know where they want to go or know what they want to do how they want to turn out and that's not the case you know you know you know in your heart what it is that you want to end up doing and the level that you want to operate on and I just say assess the situation and assess that individual to make sure that they will be able to you know match that so. and, and, and it's biblical not to be a preacher because mm-hmm. I'm not but mm-hmm. that whole principle of being equally Equal yoked, yoked man. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and I'm telling you man and baby now we have we have always done everything together we've always you know worked together you know we've always just like supported each other and um, and that's why I make it my business that you know when I'm on the road it ain't just A train it's A train and trace it just like last week I had to play um, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, the Stardom Comedy Club. I was up there with DL. And when I arrived, he was like, where's Tracy? And I was like, oh, she's home. She's trying to knock that book out. But that makes me feel good because I intentionally wanted to brand my wife's Us. been with me. Yes. And, and people understand that it's a unit. It's you like know what showing I mean? up somewhere with no, like where your arm. Right. You know, and, like one arm. And right. Like, well, and then, arm. you know, sometimes too, um, you know, you have people in this profession, man, you know, they have one life on the road, you know, and another lifestyle back home. Yeah. And I just, I've always assessed that situation, not from a judgmental standpoint, but just so that I can learn because I've always been that kind of person where, you know, I'm observing my surroundings and I try to tap into, you know, um, what not to do by watching somebody, you know, kind of get snagged up. And, you know, I made it my business saying that, hey, you know what? What if it was a world created where um, the accountability was there on the road, just like the accountability was at home? Like, you know, I can roll with my wife on these shows so much that if I showed up at a gig, 
and I'm on a carpet or a red carpet somewhere, I'm at an event, at a table all booed up, my friends and my colleagues be looking at me like, what is you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why like, you have this, another arm? You yeah. know you got an arm. Right, right. You got three arms now? Right. It's like, this ain't Tracy. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I, got you. I, I got wanted you. to create that pressure. Yeah, yeah. And that level of accountability. And speaking of your, your homeboy, DL, mm-hmm. he's the same way. He's DL's same been way. married like... Hey, right. I forgot. I think last I, I met, and it's funny. And they got married young. Yeah, and they've been together. And I mean, he is Since in love teenagers. with teenagers. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't really mess with DL like that because yeah. he kind of tried to clown me one time. Like, I was on, <laughs> that's why I don't sit on the front row because y'all evil. Don't do it. Don't sit on the front row. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got to tell my DL story. You got to tell so it. What with, you know my cousin Tracy. I'm not, my cousin Sherry. Tracy's friend. Okay, I, yeah. They were yeah, in high yeah. school together. So we decide to go to a uh, comedy club. Okay. Comedy Zone in okay. Jacksonville, Florida. Gotcha, gotcha. And we go over in DL. Like, okay, you know DL. And I've met him a million times. I've interviewed him. He's been on shows and stuff. But I'm thinking, and you know how small the Comedy Zone is. Right. And so I bought the little tickets on the front row. And I'm thinking, oh, he's going to give a great show. Right. Forgetting the fact that DL, wherever he is, as a part of his show, <laughs> is going to talk about you. So at the time, I was anchoring the news. Oh God! So I work out, as you know. Right. We, we follow each other on Instagram. Right. And and I'll give your your social media stuff in a bit. So I'm, um, you know, I work out a lot, and at the yeah. time I was kind of, you know, slightly swole. Yeah, you do your thing. <laughs> I'm doing you my do thing, thing. And I'm sitting yeah. there, and I'll swole up on the thing. <laughs> so DL says we're sitting there, so he's going, "What do you do? What do you do? What do you do?" So right. he finally gets to me, you know. Right. I'm thinking like, okay, you know, I don't, you know, like, okay, maybe he's gonna pass by me. It ain't pass over. <laughs> I know what you say. It ain't pass over. So he's like, "What do you do?" I said, "Well, actually, I'm a news anchor." So he pauses. <laughs> no, that's not what he asked me. I'm sorry. The first question he said, he said, hey, bro, when you got when out? you get out? He said, when you got out? And I was like, what you mean? He's all swole up there. So you, you know, you must have just like that at the club, right? You must have been in prison. Right. I was like, no. He said, what you do, man? I said, right. I'm a news anchor. He pauses and says, they let your thug ass anchor the news. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, but I'm a news anchor. <laughs> and the club then fell out of his screen. Yeah. I'm like, but I'm yeah. a news anchor. Yeah, man. And so it was, that was, and he's such a good guy. He talked about his kids. And oh, I think man. one of his children has um, autism. autism mm-hmm. And he, he brought that into his show. Mm-hmm. But he talked about his love for family. Yeah, man. And, and I see that you guys mirror each yeah. other on that. Yeah. Well, how'd you end up connecting? I know the comedy world, especially amongst African American comedians, is small. Yeah. How'd you guys end up connecting? Um, I was in New York. Um, I was playing a uh, New York comedy club, and I saw DL was scheduled to come through the uh, Caroline Comedy Club on Broadway. Uh, like I think it was like two or three days later than my, after my show. And Caroline's is huge. Yeah, yeah. Caroline's main, yeah. mainstream club, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. so um, I went through to support, go to the show, whatever, and um, um, the guy that opened up for him. He was on the show that I was on at the New York Comedy Club. So I'm backstage. I see him pacing. And I'm like, oh, man, they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Let me go. I was like, I know that walk. He must have to perform tonight. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. trying to get his head together. Yeah. So sure enough, I go so I go over there. and I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? He's like, hey, what's up, Train? I was like, you, you got to perform tonight? He's like, yeah, man. I'm just trying to get my thoughts together. So we chop it up. And then he introduced me to... Uh, this other comic backstage, okay. he was like, "Hey, Steve, this is A Train. He's out of Duval. He's a comic, you know, da da da." So we we chopped it up, and then um, um, I said, "Hey man, I'm gonna let you go and get your hair straight. I'll be back after the show." He performs, DL performs. The show is over, but the guy that I met prior to the show, he had left early. So I'm walking backstage as DL is coming off stage. His security, his manager, you know, and uh, you know his assistant and stuff like that. So we get behind the the, uh, the curtain, you know, and his road manager stops and turn around because people are trying to come back backstage. there as well. Yeah. So he stops, and I'm standing at the the threshold, yeah. and uh, he looks back over his shoulder. At the comedian Steve, and was like, "Hey, you know who this is?" He's like, "Yeah, he's cool. That's A Train. He's a comedian out of Jacksonville. You can let him through." I had just met him before the show from my guy, and it just happened. And it just happened. Your guy so, was gone. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. my guy was gone. Yeah. So they let me through, and DL is standing like right there, man, brother. I'm like, I'm "Oh, like, you a comedian?" Yeah, I'm like, no, <laughs> but I'm like Eminem. You know, my yeah. my palms are sweaty. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. just. I'm like, man, this is because I've always looked up to him. Yes. I've always admired him, you know, as a comic or whatever. 
And this would have been my first time meeting him, like actually having a conversation with him or whatever. And um, so we're backstage, man, and he's trying to take pictures and all that. And he's like, hey, hold my glass. You know, I'm like, oh. Which is big in entertainment because that's the one rule you know. Right. You don't put your drink you down. Don't put your drink down. You don't put your drink down. I've been down. in this game a long so time. So we stand there on the wall no, and he's yeah. telling me, he said, hey, hold my glass. Wow. Never have, having met you Never before. Met. So I step to the side. He snaps his picture, whatever. And I give him his glass back. And, you know, he has a cigar. He's talking. He's, you know, chopping it up. And, you know, I introduce myself. And we begin to talk, man. And I asked him, I said, hey, um, have you ever thought about mentoring? Uh, of the mm. comics and he looked at me man he was like all the time bro he was like uh, he said but my only issue is they don't listen mm. I said well you won't have to worry about that with me and he was like oh yeah I was like yeah he's like you ain't gotta worry about that with me I'll listen he said take my number down just like that and the rest is history and the rest is history so from that day uh, in New York we met, oh man, it's probably been like about four years ago now. And um, the next gig he had was in Sarasota. It wasn't the next gig, but the next time I met up with him was in Sarasota. And I took Tracy with me so that she could meet DL. And that's when he told her, he's like, look, you know, we talk. Here's what we're going to do. And he was like, I got you. Y'all ain't got to worry about this. You ain't got to worry about that. I got you. And you've been... Successful. And Added. he's been he's been, you know, true to his word and I've been true to my word, which is, you know, my job is to show up. I see what you're doing on the road. I see how you treat people behind the stage. I see how you handle the business. So I'm learning these things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And DL is uh has proven to me to be one of those comedians who can go through so many corridors and still remain the same and still get the love. I mean, he could chop it up with cats in the hood, and then the next day, he can sit down and talk with Wolf Blitz. It's like, how do you... Which, I, I was so disappointed when that show ended. You know, obviously, me being a news guy. Right. Even though I'm an actor, I'm still a news guy right. by, by training. As, right. You know, and, and when he had that show, it was it brought so much right. fun. and Because I think I'm a slightly funny guy at times, mm-hmm. but it mm-hmm. brought that realism. So I was always there to see the DL show. Yeah. And when CNN decided not to keep it, it just, it got to me. And you've been in the business. Dude. Yeah, you've been in the business and yeah. you're in the business. You know, a lot of times that stuff could be on the writers. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That yeah. scripting and yeah. if they don't really script that thing and format it right to meet that personality and those wits, you know what I'm saying? Because he's a smart guy. Because he's a very intelligent very guy, man. Smart guy. And um, so that's my dude, man. And um, we've just been rocking together ever since, man. So Which is beautiful. It means that <clears throat> when you are, you know, um, one of my favorite books, The Alchemist. Um, okay. It says it in the book. When you believe in something with your entire heart, mm-hmm. the whole universe conspires to make it happen. Man. And so it was just that moment where you just happened to be in New York, happened to be at the threshold. And, yeah. and it's no happenstance. It, right. it was all right. destined. Right. But the beauty is you are available. And he so talks some, about that. And sometimes we get to those points. As I'm sure you know, where we mm-hmm. like, well, this is how it's supposed to go. Mm-hmm. But there is no supposed to. He talked about that. <clears throat> he told, uh, you know, in the green room, we were chopping up one day. And he was like, it's like, train made all this happen. You need to understand that you're a wolf. It's like moves like this, you know, uh, uh, positioning like this. He's like, that don't just happen, you know. And he's like, what you're doing is unheard of. But that's the past. It's like divine order. You're right. just, but you're following the steps. Right. You have a similar story. I hope you'll share about Cedric the Entertainer. And Cedric. I met him, you know, like just rolling with DL with the comedy get down. You know, you had uh, Charlie Murphy, you know, rest in peace. You yeah, had uh, yeah. uh, Mike Epps, uh, Eddie Griffin, DL, and Sid. So, you know, when DL is on the road, you know, I, you know, I, I be there too. So, um, just kicking it with him backstage, and then DL is always speaking highly of me too. George and to said and you know so mm-hmm. you know we would chop it up in the back or whatever um, almost every show and I think there's I, I like to pride myself on until somebody proved me wrong <laughs> that's not on staff with the comedy get down there's nobody in this country in this world that has been to more comedy get downs than me so that's a, a historical moment that's a historical that we need to because this is because keep in mind comedy get down is the largest a uh, comedy grossing group tour to hit uh, the venue. Yes, it's bigger than Kings of Comedy. Yeah, you know comedy what I'm saying. Now going everywhere. Right. Every- and this is the last. I mean, this was the last platform that Charlie Murphy was on. So yeah. I mean, people really can't appreciate it now, but they will as the years come and they look back on it. It's like, oh my God, 
you know, this was this was something epic. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I and I I would be able to let them know that's right, it's epic, and I was right there as a part of as a part of, and I was watching it go down from city to city. But you know, said open the door. Said open the Tell door. I had a gig to come up, and um, uh, they got a call. From the guy who whose uh, event it was, they wanted me to be on it, and um, and he's from St. Louis, and said is from St. Louis, right. so he's asking about comics, and he threw my name out, and it's like, hey, do you know this dude? You know, do we sh- should we go with him or should we go get this big name? Da da da, and um, said told him say, no nah, man, Train is the right one for this gig right wow. now. So, and this came back to me, it's like, hey, Train. You know, here's the deal. We're going to go ahead and lock this in. And by the way, we locked this in because of the word of said the entertainment. I was like, oh, really? It's like, yeah, he spoke very highly. I'm like, well, thanks for no pressure, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then, you got to perform. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. when I saw him at the next Comedy Get Down, I was like, hey, said, say, hey, man, they told me you put a good word in for me with this. He said, yeah, how did that go? He's like, he said, yeah. He said, I knew you was man for the job. It's all love, baby. It's like, man. Wow. Never, we we'll never worked with him, but he never said, worked with him. Here, you but go. he knew I was DL's guy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And from the time that we have chopped it up, you know, just like in passing and just sitting down, you know, where you're from, that kind of thing, what you're doing, and that was it, man. But he's never seen me perform, you know. But but he he put it. And word you're paying out. DL back, right? And I'm I'm gonna tell you, I, I'm kind of putting your business in the street. You're paying him back. Wow. One of the things that I say as I've had a bunch of mentors in my career, as, as you have, you know, mm-hmm, people mm-hmm. that have, have either kicked you in the neck and said, you're going to yeah. do this and got you together. Yeah. Um, the one thing I tell people, if I do something to help someone, mm-hmm. I don't make it public, but I say, help somebody else. That's it. Pay it forward. That's it. And That's without it. even, and I got to just put it on blast as, as a professor here, uh, without even asking you to pay it forward. You took one of my students. Wow! Yeah, and man. took and so that's a continuation of wow. what DL did. Wow! And now that student is helping other students. Now that student is creating something for man. you. So you are continuing to do that. So thank you for taking the wisdom of Washington Heights. Wow. That's what we'll call it: the wow. wisdom of Washington Heights, <laughs> and really paying it forward. So gotta that's say what's thank up, you for man. That. I appreciate that. So I got a list of names. I'm not going to read them all. Kirk Franklin, Patty Labelle, Tamala Mann, David Mann, the Osley Brothers, Mary Mary, Yolanda Adams. I could go down this list. You've opened <laughs> for all of these people. Any any artist, and I don't want to sell anybody under the bus, but anybody your favorite uh, that you really enjoyed and. Uh, number two, I think that's uh, you, you talked about meeting DL and you had the clammy mm-hmm. palms. Was there anybody you're like, okay, Patty LaBelle is gonna come out here? If I'm not funny, <laughs> she gonna clown me. Was, was there anybody that you were a little bit intimidated by, um, or that you were starstruck by? Well, I wouldn't say intimidated, but I definitely would say I was really just like, oh man, this is cool. It was uh, Frankie Beverly, man. Frankie for He's Frankie Beverly to yeah. you know to allow me to. Get on his platform, number one. Yeah. And then to sling jokes, number two. And then number three to tell me, man, you funny. He's like, man, you had me rolling, man. You 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 funny. You really it's funny. It's like it's like you the real deal, man. I was like, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like Frank and Beverly, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that that was real cool to me. And of course, you know, everybody that you called out on there, I mean, these are legends, man. These people are yeah. great in the in the community. And um you know, Patty LaBelle, that, that show was interesting because I was supposed to do like 20 minutes and things weren't ready in the back and the stage man is on the side behind the curtain. And he's like, keep going, A-Train, keep going. So I ended up doing like a 45, 50 minute set. Wow. I, and I, I regret it. I was like, man, I wish I would have recorded. Like, I, I could have shot. That could have been my special. You're, you're special right there. You know there. what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. it was like. The energy in the room. It was perfect, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was perfect, man. And uh, I was like, God, no. So we had a good time that night. And um, so Patty was, you know, that show was uh, phenomenal. And um, also, you know, working with Michael Jr., man. Yes. Michael you Jr. know, Michael Jr. Funny is guy. like the Dave Chappelle of clean comedy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I really respect his body of work. And to be able to um, have him come and do my A-Train live show. And that show was real special because... We did a clean show. To be able to sling jokes is one thing, but to do it where people trust to bring their kids yeah. and their family, you know what I'm saying? They trust what you're about to say. 
You know what I mean? That's real big to me. So that show was real special, man. In in classic comedian status, uh, are there some of the classics that, that are there people that you look up to? Richard Pryor. Uh, what I gleaned from Richard Pryor because you know he started out doing clean sets. Yes, yes. And um, when word got back to him that oh he's trying to be like this guy Bill Cosby. Yeah. And like when he came back from the trip, uh, that Africa trip. Um, and he decided that he'll never use the N word. Yeah. And that night he bummed. They're like, "Boo, you ain't funny, you ain't funny." You know what I'm saying? And he came back the next night, same venue. You know what I'm saying? Same city, and just gave it to him. Was rock. authentically Richard and gave them what they wanted. Yeah. Is there a favorite one of Richard's? Um, I won't say characters, but you mm-hmm. know they had a lot of their 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 vignettes. I guess you call them. Yeah, yeah. Is there one? I, I know I have a favorite, which I'll tell you. But is there one of yours? that's like okay, that's my Richard part. <laughs> that, that one right there. Is there one of the Richard? I mean, I like so not Richard one as stands the, out. Yeah, it's like I mean, I love the diversity that he brought because he know brings what I'm to something different to everything. Right. Do you remember? And I'm speaking. And he was the first to do what Tyler Perry is doing. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That had never been done before. before Tyler, that's right. That's yeah. Right. One guy playing all these personalities on on film. No, nobody ever did that. He never thought about it. Right. Right. The one thing you you got to remember this. I let my students hear it, and they were like, "Oh my!" Like they had not. Mm-hmm. They didn't have a context. Like I think their comedy. History mm-hmm. started with like raw from Eddie Murphy. <laughs> right. I'm like, right, and, and if I'm, that, right, if that, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, I had introduced them to like uh, who's on first. Remember Evan and Costello mm-hmm. and some of the mm-hmm. old, old and Sammy Davis Jr. and the right. Rat Pack. Yeah, and so they didn't know that. But Richard Pryor, you know, we're from the South, mm-hmm. and of course, the Root Lady is it's very common in the South. Everybody, yes. and there's some yes. funny stuff about the Root Lady. Yes, and Richard Pryor had this um, thing, this little. Thing that he did about Miss <laughs> Rudolph, and he told us about Miss Rudolph with the monkey foot and the monkey foot, and she took and pissed on the foot, and the foot they bubble and blah. And when I heard Richard Pryor do that, I cried and uh, every time I hear him talk about Miss Rudolph, the root lady. I just cannot stop laughing. Man, when he talked about uh, when the police <laughs> came, when he was shooting his car, when he shot up his car, yeah, and the police came. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, but they, they, you know, he shot his car, but the police officers, they shoot, you know, he say niggas, you know, it's like, it's just, I mean, I remember watching this documentary somewhere and I'm hearing Paul Mooney them say they would have to write Richard's set after he performs it. Because it was, they didn't know where he was going. Because he was such a authentic comic, Mm. but on Richard, they had to do it on the back end. Because he was that brilliant. Yeah, man. What what are some of your memorable moments in Def Comedy Jam? Oh man, um, it's more than one. I used to love, I used to love seeing Steve Brown. Yeah, I used to love seeing Arnaz J, the Bill Bellamy's, and Martin, and 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 DL. Come on, I'm waiting and, for a name. I'm waiting for a you name. Know, uh, you, you missing you, a name? Yeah, Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris Tucker. Woo. You know what I'm saying? Bernie, that's my man. And um, you know, so I mean, man, I was a fan of all of that, bro. Yeah. And yeah. that's why it's so like, oh my god, it's like, man, I was raised watching y'all on TV. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like now we here. Your colleagues. Ready to sl- yeah, yeah. Ready. And yeah. they embracing you as. You know, as a comic, and that's huge. Yeah. Your, your Instagram, which we want people to follow, do it again mm-hmm. and see what happens. Do it again and see what happens. That's where right. did that come from? Do it again and see what happens was born before A Train. A Train had to catch up to that. I started out on Facebook, man. It was a post that I was making, okay. and I did. I promise you, it was probably about 180 posts, like just back to back. I was on Facebook like it was Twitter, and I hashtag <laughs> everything with "Do it again and see what happens," uh-huh. and it. Call fire, brother. Wow. I will just go in on all of the nuances that you would see on Facebook or social media. And people are like, yes, thank you. Somebody finally voiced it. You know, yeah. that's right. I'm going to delete them. You know, I'm deleting everybody, you know, because uh, at that time, remember when um, Facebook had got to the point where you can create an album? Yes. Um, 
Yeah. Um, and yeah. so they, they they created where you can do an album, but people wasn't they wasn't that savvy, so they just still will post like forty individual pictures on the timeline. and they'll clog up your timeline. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I'm like, you know what? The next time you know, anybody uh, posts another forty pictures and don't know how to use the album, you know, so I'm deleting you. You know, do it again and see what happens. And it just went like the next person who cut the eyebrows off and you know and, and draw them back on. off, you know, <laughs> like you know, you do it again and see what happens. Yeah. And it just went on and on. It's like next girl I see on my time. I'm lying with baby pot on her neck all up to her ears, you know, <laughs> sending me a prayer request, you know, it's like, you know, do it again and see what happens. So it just went, it was about 200 posts, man. I lie to you not, just sitting there like back to back, like it was Twitter. Yeah. And um, that's how Do It Again and See What Happens was born. Do It Again and See What Happens on Instagram. Yeah. Um, ComedianATrain.com is uh, your website. Comedian a dash train. Follow me on Facebook. Like that page for me. I always post my dates on there, and my Twitter is a train live. So now you have um, a major show coming up, Jacksonville, Florida, yes, April twentieth. This is, but you've been doing a season. This is your second season. My second season at the Ritz Theater. Yeah. you know we were doing a train live the experience for the last few years. So we get ready to have a good time, man. At the end, you sit down and talk to the comedian, right? Kind of like we're doing, right? Right. Get some background on it, right? And you get a chance to share why I brought this person, you know, on right. my platform, and we'll share some road stories. You know what I mean, yeah. and what and it really a train live the experience is just my personality. It's like my living room. It's who I am. I love yeah. music. I love to laugh, and I love you know hanging out with people. And you can log on right now, <laughs> Ticketmaster dot com, and put in a train comedian a train. Yes, he'll be in Jacksonville, Florida, at the Ritz Theater and Museum in downtown Jacksonville, eight twenty nine North Davis Street, and it's uh, doors open at seven o'clock. Doors open. Show at 7. starts at eight p.m. Yeah, uh, we're gonna do a lightning question round before we get out of here. Okay, what's your favorite color? Oh, blue. Why? Uh, it's my, yes, my uh, childhood nickname. What's your favorite food? Uh, no, shrimp. Okay, I was going to say, I, I shouldn't, we didn't even get on the fact that you and your wife keep the crab house in business. Hey, man, we love seafood. <laughs> That's a Duval thing. And shrimp is my favorite food item of all. Really? Yeah, man. So are you like the Forrest Gump, like that fried shrimp? That's me, brother. shrimp? That's me, man. Barbecue shrimp? That's me. However, okay. Yeah, okay. I love shrimp. Brother. Do you have any pets? No pets. I'm not an animal guy. Really? Never so you like pets. See, I grew up in apartments. We didn't have you, you we 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 didn't do animals at all. You know what I'm saying? Because you were scared of the one that was around the corner on that other street. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. What's your favorite city that you visited? New York. Why New York? Uh I love performing in New York. Um because if you can make New York laugh as a comedian, you can make the world laugh. New York is good. All right, I gotta show you. And I'm going to play this for you and then get your response to this. That can be the Jesus is my Easter bunny. I yes, but I'm still celebrating or not. <laughs> <laughs> Come to me a month. So, do you have favorite internet sensations you got? Like Instagram uh, or anything? Like, you know who I'm in love with? I know who? she has a man. In my mind, Jess Hilarious Official is like my best friend. That's your best friend? Like, I just want to just know her. Wow, that's cool. Okay. Do you know Jess Hilarious Official? No, I don't know her. We've never crossed paths. Do you, have you watched her stuff? Yes, I've seen her work. She yes. is ridiculous. She's supposed funny. to be here soon, too. I think uh, she just left. And I was on the road when she You're came. right, she did. She just she did. I was trying to, and I couldn't get in my schedule to be here. Yeah. I think she is so funny. Yeah, Jess is doing her thing. And she's man. not really like, you know who she reminds me of? MC Light. Yeah, I she reminds me like MC Light, and I I, I've always that. like had a crush on MC Light. I can see and that. And so she just kind of like round away girl. Like, <laughs> right, right. That's like, that Baltimore man. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's that beat more. She look like she the girl that if you're walking down the street late at night and somebody jump you, she gonna be like, what, what, <laughs> what? Like she got your back for real. Like, right, she right. throwing bows. Yeah, that's that Baltimore up in her man. Okay, love yeah, her, man. Love her. Yeah. So uh, last bit of advice, man. You'd like to uh, whatever. you Obviously, uh, don't forget. Well, we'll we'll give a plug in a second. Give me your uh, advice, your, your 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 advice, your life advice to keep people mm. moving forward. Last to thing. keep people moving forward. Yeah, I say do what makes you happy, brother. Mm. Do what makes you happy. Yeah, do that again and see what happens. Right. <laughs> there it is. There it is. A train. Yeah. Thanks for spending time in the Rockland Experience. Don't forget the comedian A Train. The no problem, A Train man. Experience Live will be at the Ritz Theater and Museum at seven o'clock on April twentieth. Doors open at seven. Show starts at eight o'clock. You don't want to be late. Comedian Mark Gregory will also be headlining. You can get your tickets. And you know what? Can I give away a pair of tickets? Yeah, absolutely, man. Let's Call in 540-ROCKMAN7. That's 540-R-A-H-M-A-N-7. We'll give you yeah. a pair of tickets uh, to come and check out Comedian A-Train Live. A-Train, thanks for being in the experience. No problem, man. Thank you for having me, brother. And uh, much continued success to you, man. We'll see you yeah. soon. Yes, sir.
What a great way to end the show. And, you know, as we were headed out, I asked A-Train, what's his key to living your best life? Here's what he said. I say, do what makes you happy, brother. Mm. Do what makes you happy. Yeah, do that again and see what happens. Right. <laughs> there it is. There it is. That's it. Powerful but simple words. And that's another key to living your best life. Special thanks to our producers, Hayden Cummings, Tierra Humphrey, the entire team who came together to do the research to make the Rockman experience hump like it does. Uh, thanks for all of the work you do and all of our sponsors. Everyone, you make the experience possible. Remember, don't take no from someone who does not have the authority to tell you yes. You define your yes. And if no one's told you today, know that I love you. Even though I might not have met you, I love you. Now go ahead. Be amazing. The it's a brand new experience, a brand new time, a brand new way to do it, and yeah, it's all mine. I'm the one telling stories you thought couldn't be told. I'm the one that bring you in your when you shaking from the cold. I'm the one always out front, yeah, trying something new. I'm the one that's gonna deliver when they ask what it do. Politics, entertainment, a science, all the news. Keeping you on the level with the stuff you can use. DJ Kids on the beat, the rock's got the track. It's the rock, man, that's serious. You know that's where it's at. Uh,